Hi everyone, my name is Patrick, the product manager of SkySiv Load Generator. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to generate wind load calculations for open frames or signs using ALC 716 in the SkySiv Load Generator. To start, we need to select the design code, which is ALC 716, and also select the unit system that we will be using. For this example, I will be using Imperial uh, units, and then click Proceed. Once the SkySiv load generator is loaded, we will need to define each input data from top to bottom. But we can skip the project details part as uh, we won't be generating a final report for this. But you can define the project name, project ID, company, designer, client, and project notes that can be included in your final design report. So to begin with, we need to select the site data and then we, we need to define the risk category and the project address. In this example, I'll just use risk category one and put Dallas, Texas as the address. The basic wind speed, the site elevation, and the ground snow load will be automatically generated from our database. And you can also override these values. For now, I'll just leave it as is, as 100 miles per hour. Since everything is already okay, I just need to click Confirm Site Data. You will notice that the button label here uh, changes its color from white to green, indicating that all the input data there are already valid and confirmed. After this, we just need to click the Structure Data and select the Structure option. For this example, we will be selecting Open Frames or Signs. Once we select the Open Frames or Signs, we will be shown with the schematic figure of of the structure so you have three different types of member so one is oriented vertical horizontal and the other is in diagonal position so i'll be discussing that once we define the member data later uh, right now i just need to define the ground to top of open frame which is this one so let's say the height ground to top of open frame value is 30 feet and then the ratio of solid area to gross area uh, is equal to 0 0.1 by default this is set to 0 0.1 which will yield to the most conservative value of the net force coefficient you can also click the 3d render tab so that you can uh, check the structure and then i what i will do is click this define member data once loaded uh, the table will be loaded uh, with default value the default value for section type is flat sided. So you can select uh, flat sided or rounded. And then the section depth will be default value as one, one foot. The orientation vertical and the member bottom elevation and member top elevation from zero and 150 feet. So since I have a ground to top value of 30, uh, what I can do is I'll just edit this one. And then maybe uh, change this one into 0 0.5 uh, feet. Uh, this is 6 inches. And set it to rounded vertical. And then you can add multiple member data by clicking this button. So that uh, you can also get the pressure values or wind, wind load values for mem horizontal members, diagonal members, and so on. So if you are using different section type, uh, say it's a flat sided or uh, one horizontal member is round rounded and one one vertical member is rounded or flat sided so also if you have different section depth and different bottom elevation and top elevation so uh, let's say uh, I have flat sided horizontal member and say this is also 0 0.5 of foot so it's six inches and then once I set this orientation to horizontal, the member top elevation input field will be disabled. So I just I just need to define one input value for this one. So let's say we have multiple horizontal members. So every 10 feet, I'll put 10 feet here and then uh, flat sided horizontal, horizontal. Let's say we have uh, horizontal member at 20 feet and at 30 feet and 
and yeah so i'm satisfied with that 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then we have diagonal member uh let's say it's also flat sided with uh six inches uh width or depth and then i'll select diameter so so let's say uh we only have a diagonal from zero to ten feet and then that's it the good thing about this table is uh, you can just select this one or you can import a data with uh, the same uh, input field or input data uh, from Excel or Google spreadsheet. Once I'm, uh, since I'm already satisfied, so I just need to, to close this one. And I need to confirm structure data. After defining your structure data, we just need to click the wind load button so that we we need to define the exposure category. We need to define the wind source direction. Or you, what you can do is just click this one, uh, view design wind pressure data for all direction. And the software will automatically generate you the elevation data from each wind source direction. And then it will automatically generate the table, which will yield you the highest uh, highest velocity pressure based on your exposure category. By default, the exposure category here are uh, defaulted to D, exposure D, as it will also yield you the most conservative uh, value or the worst case scenario if you, di if you didn't change it. You can uh, edit or update each exposure category for wind uh, for each wind source direction by clicking the terrain or the sectors on the in the map so let's say i will select or i definitely i can define everything as exposure b so i just need to click this one or you can just select this uh wind source or the exposure category and then it will change the corresponding wind source uh, ter terrain category to the corresponding wind source direction. So let's say this is C at north. So yeah, but right now I'll just select B. And then I just need to select the open frames. Uh, in here, I want to divide each uh, wind pressure uh, by level. So every 10 feet. So what I'll do is just put 10, 20, and then 30. After defining the structure height data, we just need to define the gas effect factor uh, value here. Either you calculate this manually and put the value that you want, or use our calculate gas effect factor function uh, button here. Definitely, the, these structures may not be classified as rigid already since uh, they may have natural frequency more than uh, one, one hertz. So this one, uh, let's say the frequency is 2, 2.0, uh, just a wild guess. Then once I click uh, the dump dumping ratio, let's say it's 5%, uh, still 5% or 0 0.05. Once I click this one, it will automatically generate or calculate the gas effect factor. So in here, uh, it calculated it as 0 0.899. Take note that it will use the smallest width of the mem member in the member data uh, and set it as the structure length and structure width in the calculation of the gas effect factor. So it may have a different uh, values that you want. So uh, I suggest you can just manually calculate the gas effect factor to get the appropriate wind pressure. And then I just need to close. Uh, let's say uh, I want to use gas effect factor 1, 1 1.0. And then once everything is already okay, I just need to confirm wind parameter. Since everything is already okay, uh, I just need to click this calculate loads. So from our data, uh, we can we can see the summarized site data, the structure data, which uh, the, has the member data and this, the ground to top of the open frame and the ratio of solid to gross area. The wind pressures will be calculated uh, for each member. So earlier we defined the structure height data to 10, 20, 30. So for vertical members that has the the member bottom and member top coinciding with the structure height data, 
we it the pressure will be divided into those uh, points. So here in member one we have zero, ten, twenty, and then thirty. So the pressure application for that is uh, like this. So the value at thirty, for example, here uh, thirty, and then going down, and then twenty, this one, and then and so on. So you can double check the load calculation by clicking the detailed uh, wind load calculation here. And then this report will show you all the assumptions, all the formula, all the data that we used in the calculation. It will still calculate you this detailed, cal uh, detailed gas effect factor, but it will adapt the value from the user, the user input, uh, which we set it to 1 earlier. So here, uh, it's being calculated as 0 .08, 0 0.899, and then it adapted the gas effect factor as 1.0. So this is the values, and then the net force coefficient, the gas effect factor, and then the pressure. In S3D, we can also generate wind load for open frames or signs. In this example, uh, I'll be using this model, and then show you how to do it. Uh, we just need to select ASE 716 and click Start. So I'll be putting the same uh, data, uh, just the same uh, process that we had in the standalone version. So the difference is once I click this open sign, I can I will put the ground to top of open frame. Let's say this is is still the ratio of the solid area to gross area. So this is the worst case. I'll be, uh, I want to get the maximum net force coefficient. So I'll just set it to 0 0.1. And then I'll, divi I'll define the member data. The difference in using the wind, wind load calculation in for open frames in S3D is uh, we can, we have this detect member data, which will automatically get all the section depth and the orientation and the member bottom elevation and member top elevation data for each. The only thing that we need to do is make sure that the section type is well defined. So actually everything is rounded or all the member sections are rounded. So we need to just copy and paste the, the values here. Uh, I'll just uh, set select each and then uh, I'll just copy uh, since the member sections are rounded so that's what we need to do oops also take note that the section depth is the maximum value of the section width and section depth that is defined in the section uh, data uh, assigned to each member so this one uh, we can we can just put it as is for now or you can just edit it uh, for more appropriate uh, value uh, once our everything is okay i just need to click close and then confirm section structure data uh, same process in the wind load i just uh, i'll just uh, select anything or uh, for exposure and wind source direction and then select this one and then i want to divide the pressures for uh, ele at elevation one four seven and ten one four seven ten and then i've uh i've calculated the frequency earlier for, mo for mode one uh i'll put 2.4 here and then just uh, click calculate generator loads. Uh, since uh, this is calculated as 0.898, um, either I adapt this one or maybe I'll just use one for more conservative value. And then click confirm wind parameters. Once everything is done, uh, just click this calculate loads button. In S3D, uh, it, it's, uh, since it's not 
or it's inevitable that you have a lot of member data. So it's summarized as a table. Then when you click this button, you can view the wind pressure acting on that uh, member. Okay, so this is the schematic di diagram of the load applied to the member. And then what I'll do is click this assign loads to structure. So either you can uh, uh, just click this add member load and then uh, select the axis, select direction. What you can do here is uh, two, three different ways. So you can just uh, put, say, let's say I'll put member 8, member 17, and then member 18. And then I just click commit loads. Oops, uh, I need to select positive, negative Z. So this is the applied load there. Or also you can you can do uh, what you can do is uh, let's say ten to twenty, and then just click. Uh, so here uh, the members ten. Uh, let me just uh, turn off. So members uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 14, 13. Uh, we cannot see it since uh, this uh, this value or this distributed load is applied to the parallel to the direction of the member. So definitely, we this is uh, not OK. What I, I can do is just use the the third method, which is uh, I'll remove first load and then I'll select from left, uh, pressing control from left or from right to left down, up, uh, down. So I will select these members and then click this input field. Uh, so all the selected member IDs there will be put here and then I'll just need to click commit loads. So you can see that the loads are applied only to the selected mo uh, member IDs. Also, you can do another load uh, load case, which is let's say I will select or I will select this one, these uh, members. Uh, take note that the AAC seven doesn't allow uh, shielding, so definitely you can just uh, apply all the wind uh, pressure here. And then just click apply. Since uh, it's a lot of distributed loads, it will uh, definitely take a while. So the loads are applied uh, to the selected members uh, for X direction. So from that, you can already create your load combination or edit everything or, and then update uh, everything take note that the pressures here are the pressures here for example in member one is uh, multiplied by the section depth that's being used and then applied as distributed load and then after this you can just uh, go back to svd and analyze the, the structure and that's how you use the load generator for generating the wind load uh, on open frames or signs using ALC 716.